Have you heard about Storage yet? Storage is a Web3 company that has built a secure global storage system that businesses and individuals can use to store their data in the cloud. It's different than traditional cloud storage offered by Google, Amazon, or Backblaze, because instead of the data sitting in a big data center somewhere, people like you and I can rent out our spare disk on our NASA's servers and home labs to store others' data. I've been running a storage node since October of 2022, and now that I've put a few months into it, I thought it'd be a great time to talk about how storage works, how I've set it up, how much money I've made so far, and my opinions about it. Let's get to it. All right, let's talk about how storage works first. Each uploaded file is encrypted, broken into 80 small chunks called shards, and sent to over 16,000 nodes around the world. This provides redundancy because your data isn't being stored in a singular location that can suffer failure. If a node goes offline that happens to hold some of your data, there are plenty of other nodes holding the same data, and your data is safe. And no single node holds enough of anyone's data to be able to attempt to decrypt it or access it. When a storage user accesses or downloads their data, fragments of the files are downloaded from various nodes at the same time. This means that storage downloads are typically faster than centralized cloud storage providers like Amazon S3, Google, or Azure. Storage uses a blockchain to enable security, decentralization, privacy, and transparency. And node operators like myself are paid rent in StorageCoin, which is an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum blockchain. I initially discovered storage when I was looking through the available apps in the app library on my TrueNAS Scale host. TrueNAS Scale is where I run my storage node as a container currently, which makes sense since that's where all my storage is anyway. Let's take a look at it now. As mentioned, I use TrueNAS Scale as my storage solution for storing all of my personal data and the video data we create here on the channel. I provided four terabytes of storage for storage on this scale box, and I'm running storage in a container. TrueNAS maintains an app of storage, so installation is super quick and easy. To participate as a node, you need to meet the minimum requirements, which are surprisingly low. You'll need at least a single processor core, have the ability to dedicate a minimum of 550 gigabytes of storage to your node, be able to serve up to a maximum of two terabytes of bandwidth a month, have an upload speed of at least five megabits a second and a download speed of at least 25 megabits a second, and probably the toughest part for users, the ability to keep your node online 24 seven. As I mentioned earlier, I've been running storage now since October of 2022. So let's take a look at how much my provided four terabytes has been used by storage and how much money I've been making. The storage node container provides a simple but useful local dashboard when you install it to keep an eye on your node's utilization and earnings. On top, the dashboard gives you at-a-glance status information about your uptime, contact to the network, current running version, and more. The next graph is bandwidth utilization for the current period. At this time I'm filming this in mid-January, I've moved nearly 500 gigs of data through my connection. The next set of graphs shows the disk space utilization for the month and a breakdown of how my provision storage is being utilized. Further down, we see my node's connection stats to the six satellites that are part of the storage network. Satellites facilitate the storage interaction and decide which storage nodes will store which pieces. Each satellite has its own suspension, audit, and online statistics that can provide you with some information about the health of your node's connectivity and communications. And lastly, we have payout information. As you can see, for the month of January so far, I have earned $3.68, and if we head deeper into payout information, I am estimated to make $4.47 this month if my rates continue as they are. That's just this month. If we change the date range to all time, we can see that since October, I've earned a grand total of $12.16, with $9.12 of those earnings being held back. Held back? Yep held back. Storage holds back a certain percentage of your payout as a means of encouraging node operators to be good participants in the network. The idea here is to force operators to have a stake in the network and if they decide to leave, do so properly, not just shut down their nodes, throw away the data and cause the rest of the network to have to spend time healing. They do this by holding a certain percentage of your earnings every month. For the first three months of operation, 75% of your earnings are held. For the next four to six months, 50%. Seven to nine months, 25%. 10 to 15 months, everything is paid out and nothing is held, and 16 months and beyond back to 50%. The big takeaway is this, if you decide you're done with running a node, you need to exit gracefully from the network to get your held funds. If you just wipe out your node, you forfeit those funds as a way to repair the harm done to the network. And logically, that makes sense. The entire purpose here is to create a high performance, reliable cloud storage system, and if your participants aren't reliable, the system won't work and you're gonna have a bad time. If you're interested in getting storage up and running on TrueNAS scale, the TrueNAS channel here on YouTube has a great walkthrough on how to get it going. That's what I use to get my node set up. And we'll put a link in the description below. 
I've learned some things about running a storage node that I wanted to pass on to you in case you're seriously interested in setting up your own node. Let's start with the considerations around your hardware and network's reliability. The storage network has a concept of node reliability and that nodes that are not reliable are not allowed to participate in the network. This is done through a variety of methods like uptime checks to see if your node is online and audit checks to see if the data sent to the node is still held there and intact. If you fail to keep your node online consistently or you fail enough audit checks, you'll be disqualified from participation and your node won't get any data and you won't get paid. Now that's not to say that you can never be offline. I've rebooted my host numerous times, did an upgrade to the most recent version of scale, updated my storage container a few times and so on, and my node is still in good standing. But if you're accustomed to shutting your system down at night or for long periods of time, you shouldn't be a node. Another thing worth discussing is payment. Storage is upfront about your earnings. In fact, on the node operators page, they give you the average potential monthly earnings, which while not guaranteed, at least give you a ballpark figure on what you'd be earning. Storage coin is an ERC-20 token that operates on the Ethereum blockchain. This means that getting paid out has a cost. Storage has a minimum payment threshold that must be met before it will transfer your payment to your wallet. Here's the text from their docs. All storage node payouts are subject to a per wallet minimum threshold. We will not send a transaction where the fee for the transaction is more than 25% of the value of the transaction. The minimum threshold is calculated based on the average transaction fee valued in USD from the previous 12 hours at the beginning of the payout process. For example, if the average transaction fee is the equivalent of $12.50, we'll pay out all wallet addresses that have earned $50 and above. Basically, this means you'll have to have a relatively large payout to exceed the gas costs of Ethereum, or you'll end up having to wait until you have enough earnings to do so. So there are clearly quite a few caveats with running a node and making money off of it, so let me tell you why I still think it's a pretty great idea. First off, I'm excited about Web3 technology. I'm excited about being able to participate in the systems like this where I'm not only the consumer of the technology, but also an active participant in it. Right now, the internet for the most part is a purely consumer experience. We watch YouTube and Netflix, read Reddit and all that, but we're just consuming and paying for that access. I'm excited to also be part of the delivery model where I'm consuming the internet, but also helping serve up portions of it to others and sharing in some of those profits. My stores are aren't going to pay for my storage or my internet bills every month, but I like being part of the system and being compensated for doing so. And my systems are running anyway, using the same amount of electricity regardless, so it's less of a waste of energy. And now that you finished watching this video, check out this playlist over here of other great virtualization and home lab videos we've made in the past. If you're looking to get into home lab, we can help. Have you heard about stores yet?